the popular wisdom is that running and landing on the heel will actually reduce injuries. Uh, my personal experience has been to the contrary, and this running model has helped us uh, create a model that we think will produce a more injury-resistant athlete. A more injury-resistant athlete is able to then train more effectively, train in higher volumes, and that's a benefit to us. Uh, a second element of the model that is extremely important is the athlete is able to uh, have a more relaxed stride because they're not attempting to force an increase in stride length by pushing very hard, by lifting the knees high. Uh, they're able to achieve a level of relaxation that I as a coach know is one of the most critical elements of elite performance. Once, um, once an athlete achieves a higher level of relaxation, the amount of work necessary to go at a given speed is reduced. We see that in all the things we measure, heart rate, lactate, etc. And this model in simplifying running and in being very succinct enables an athlete to come to that point much quicker than is typically the case. Typically that, that relaxation comes only through a lot of years of running. And uh, this is a way to get there much sooner. Most important is realizing that for running, using external energy or gravity to your advantage is more important than using your internal energy. Let's take a look at the external energy forces. Gravity. Ground reaction force. Muscle elasticity. Corellius effect. Inertia. In research conducted by scientists on the proper use of the body's energy, the conclusion has been that by using muscle elasticity in any sport, the athlete saves up to 50% of the metabolic energy. The pose method is designed to give you maximum use of your metabolic energy by using this muscle reaction to benefit running. These 18 rules are necessary for proper running technique. Be sure to use them at all times. challenged Dr. Romanov to hold a class for some first-time students and see what the results would be in a short two-hour lesson. Let's take a look at the way they ran before the lesson. As you'll notice, everyone extends their legs to the straight position. And their heels consistently strike the ground before the ball of the foot. Look closely at the heel. Dr. Romanov took the novice runners through some theory and through some of the exercises that we will show you later in the video. Although the exercises require much more than two hours to learn properly, their awareness of the theory and the experience of the exercises took them to a much higher level of running, as you will see. Good technique is about minimizing the effort. Always keeping the knees bent. Relaxing the thighs. Landing on the balls of your feet. and never extending the leg beyond the general center of mass.
Your range of motion should never exceed the corridor in which your general center of mass is traveling. Proper balance and change of support are fundamental to keeping the range of motion within the effective boundaries. If you look closely at the feet, you will notice that with few exceptions, most of them have already attained the ability to run on the balls of their feet and their legs do not extend beyond the general center of mass. A good simple analogy of excessive range of motion is this. When too much gas is given to a car, the wheels spin unnecessarily as the car's general center of mass has not attained enough forward motion to equal the wheel's movement. This is the same with a runner. A runner's legs have no useful purpose when they extend or move faster than the general center of mass's forward motion. In a short two hours, Dr. Romanoff radically improved the running ability of the first-time students. We felt these runners to be the ones that understood and adapted their running to the technique best. Let's begin with section one. First is the post stance drill. This is the stance from which all movement is generated. This stance can be used to generate power in any sport. The use of a mirror is suggested to check posture. This is a good exercise to practice balance. The three key points of the body in the vertical position are shoulders, hips, and ankles. You must always be aware of this line. The point of contact with the ground is at the midfoot. This is your support point. Your weight should be over the midfoot with a finger width of space under the heel. The hip area is the next point in the vertical line. We will refer to this as the general center of mass. This area must always be kept directly above the support. The top point of the line is the shoulder. In running, our energy must be concentrated in the legs, not the upper body. The shoulder's function is to keep the balance of the vertical line on your support. From this stance, we create the running pose. <laughs> 